Raise your hand if you're a burnt out teacher with more than one classes to prep for every single day and you only have one planning period to do it all. Well, if that's you, hopefully this video will inspire you to use every single minute of your planning period because that's what we're talking about today. So just as a little background information for me, I do teach four preps and I'm the only teacher at the high school level in my content area. So that means I teach 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade all within my content area. And I don't have any other teachers at the high school level with whom I can chat about or share resources or like anything like that because I'm the only one in my content area. I'm a department of one at the high school level. Yeah. So having four preps and having to do that all by myself is a lot. And to top it off, I came in here with no curriculum last year. This is only my second year teaching, but I had no curriculum during my first year of teaching. So everything I have right now, I either made it by myself or I purchased it or I got it from the kindness of generous people online who have given it to me for free because it has really been a lot. And with all of that, my planning period is at the end of the day, no joke, ninth period. And once ninth period rolls around, I do not want to plan, definitely don't want to prep, don't want to grade, don't want to do anything because I'm so burnt out. I'm teacher tired. I'm exhausted. I want to take a nap. I want to eat. I want to rest my eyes. I just want to sit in silence. And I do not want to have to do any of the planning or the prepping or the teachery stuff at the end of the day for 45 minutes because that's how long my planning period is for. I have been slacking. Now that we have only three months left in the school year, I am feeling teacher tired and I'm feeling summer fever already. And it has been really hard for me to motivate myself to actually use my planning period as well as I should be. But I'm gonna share with you some things that have been helping me a lot to utilize every single moment of my planning period and not completely waste it. So the first thing that I do in every single planning period is to eliminate distractions. For me, that's putting away my phone. like not just setting it to the side actually putting it in my bag or putting it in a drawer like I cannot look at my phone and I'm the type of person who keeps my phone on silent and do not disturb but it just being there is a distraction for me so I literally need it out of sight out of mind I also close my door during planning period because I cannot be distracted. I don't want students to come in. Um, I really need my planning period just to do what I have to do. I only have 45 minutes in a day to prep for four different preps and I really need to utilize every single minute of that time. Also, I'm the type of person who gets distracted just by having people walk by my door. So by keeping the door closed, it really does help me minimize distractions. If you are the same way, I would definitely recommend you putting away your phone, closing the door and just letting yourself focus on your planning. Then I go ahead and I make a to-do list. Like I have so many things that I need to do, but I of course cannot get to every single one of them during my planning period. It just, it's just impossible. Like between grading and assessing and feedback, planning and prepping, printing out materials, responding to emails, putting stuff in the school tool, updating Google Classroom. There's just no time for it all in 45 minutes. So I just focus on what I actually need to do for the next day. Like there are things that I can do that will literally not help me at all for the next day. And so if I'm focusing on the larger scale picture, it's not going to help me get to what I need to do for the next day and that's what I need to focus on. So making a to-do list of the stuff that I need to do in that moment compared to focusing on miscellaneous stuff helps me stay focused a lot. And my to-do list, it's not fancy, it's not Instagram worthy, it's not Pinteresty. it is literally chicken scratch on a piece of paper. So that is how I keep myself organized and that's how I keep myself on task. The next thing that I do is I go ahead and I set a timer. This is something that I've been using in my classes a lot. I will set timers for my students and I'll say for two minutes we're doing this, or for 10 minutes we're doing this and this is the time where you just need to focus offer me your participation put away phones no conversations no nothing this is the time where we're doing classwork and i have started doing that for myself once i started doing that for my classes and that was about a few months ago i think for new year's resolutions that was one of my big new year's resolutions was to utilize the timers and i started using that for myself and it has helped me so much so i'll put a timer on for like 10 minutes and I will just work and I will not be distracted and I will keep my mind focused for their 10 minutes. And I love that because it really gives me an end goal. So I'm like, okay, at the end of 10 minutes, I know that I'm going to reward myself or I'm going to be able to take a break and I'll be able to relax a little bit. And that helps me so much by setting a timer, seeing when the timer ends, I'm such a visualizer. So actually seeing that for me does help me a lot. And oftentimes I'm just like, I can't believe that 10 minutes has already passed because it seems like there's just not enough time so having a 
timer for me really does help but what could also potentially help other people if you don't want a timer would be to set a playlist so maybe you have a playlist of like five songs and once you listen to those five songs then you're done and that's your break time because I feel like the point of all of this is to give myself a break at the end of the day if I'm not giving myself a break I'm not being productive so for me during my break once the timer's done would be eating a snack being on my phone or just being in quiet like sometimes I will literally just turn off the lights in my room and just look outside because I just need that time to just decompress mentally because it is so much teaching for six periods a day having a duty and I need that time I need to wind down and if I don't give myself that time to wind down then no joke my planning period is completely ruined and it's kind of sad to say but it's true and then once my timer is done and I've had my break I will just go ahead and I just repeat this process this really does help me a lot because it really does allow me to stay focused use my planning period tackle what I need to tackle grade assess feedback whatever it is for that day and get it done however though I do have some downtime during the day so for example like while students are switching periods or something, I really do utilize the three minutes that students have between passing periods to help my future planning self out. So whether that is quickly checking my email, quickly putting in a grade or quickly providing feedback during those three minutes, I really do my best to use those minutes to help me as much as I can because that's like almost what, 15 or 20 minutes during the day that I could use to help me in my planning and prepping. So if you are a high school teacher and you could do that, I would recommend doing that because those three minutes or those four minutes really do add up. However though, I do have some tips that I use generally to help me as a teacher and the number one thing I do as a teacher to help me not stress myself out is to not grade everything. I see way too many teachers grading literally everything. Not everything needs to be a grade. Not everything needs to go into the grade book. I don't grade everything. I will give feedback. I will check stuff over in class. We will go over it. I have students grade each other or look at each other's and I cannot grade everything because I have 100 plus students and it would just be unrealistic for me to grade everything. But one thing to do if you are a teacher would be to use the auto graders like Google Forms or quizzes. Although they do take a little bit more time to make originally, it really does help future you out because it automatically grades it and that's one less thing that you have to do. However though, I don't like using these so much because they don't allow students for higher order thinking and once I'm limiting myself to just multiple choice, I know there are so many times where I could use short answer, but like the point of me for using an auto grader is for it to auto grade itself and I don't have to go in and look and check those answers. So that's just a downside for me. If you really do want the auto grader to grade your stuff, I would recommend just doing the multiple choice, but just know that you're not gonna get the best out of a higher order thinking level question. Also, I'm not sure where I saw this, if it was on Twitter or if it was on YouTube or where it was, but once I saw this, it literally changed my whole idea of planning and as a teacher as a whole, and I have never looked back and I have never been more at peace. And this thing is the only plan for for the next day. I used the batch plan for the whole entire week for four preps and I don't even know how I could begin to do that because A, I never follow my plan because I'm always changing it based on how many things we get done and I would just overwhelm myself because I told myself and I set this unrealistic standard that I had to plan level two for the whole week and level three and level four and level five and I was just stressing myself out but now I just plan for the next day as long as I have a plan for each and every class for the next day I did what I had to do. <laughs> However though, that's just lesson planning on the daily. What I do do for a unit is to print all of the copies at once. So once a week or every other week, I will literally spend almost 30 minutes in the copy room because I'm printing out like 500 pages of paper, which seems crazy, but I have 100 students. So I really do try to print all of my stuff out at one batch. So that way I'm not going to the copier room every single day. One, because the copier room, it's like literally mad far away from my classroom. Two, the copier never works. And three, when it does work, it goes so slow. So I know I have to batch out like a whole planning period just to make copies. So that's why I only do it one at a time because I cannot spend every day in that copier room. I would lose my mind. Finally, I think this is the most important tip I could offer anyone. And that would be to work within the limits of your contract hours. I know for so many people, it's just not realistic, but I have made this my goal since I started teaching, even while I was a full-time student and doing grad school full-time even with these four preps like I do not take work home at all because I work in the limits of my contract hours and personally 
I know I'm a good teacher. I do know I'm a good teacher, but I know that I have it in me to be an outstanding teacher. However, to be that outstanding teacher, I would have to work like two extra hours every single day to be that outstanding teacher. And I could do it. Truthfully, I could do it. However, I would be sacrificing my sanity. I would be sacrificing the time with my family, my mental health, my personal time. And for me, being an outstanding teacher is not more important than spending time with my family or saving my mental health or being able to go to the gym because those things matter to me. And without those things, although on paper I could be this outstanding teacher, internally I know that I would just be so sad. So for me, I don't bring work home because it's not worth it for me to be an outstanding teacher when I know I'm a good teacher because I need to save that time for my own mental health and my own sanity. And truthfully, I'm only as good as a teacher as my prep load and planning time allow me to be and there is no shame in saying that. So those are some of my teacher tips for how to utilize and maximize every single minute of your planning period. For me it is so easy to just push it off but these five things have really been allowing me to utilize like every single minute of my planning period and I feel productive and I'm not just like oh I'm going to completely trash my planning period because I'm too tired at the end of the day because I need to use it and I need to get stuff done. However, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you have other tips or tricks, comment them down below, especially if you have something better than what I said because you could completely read my video and you could be like, wow, that's trash. <laughs> Here's something better. And if that's you, definitely comment down below. Or if you think this advice is useful or if you use something else, like let me know down below because I'm always trying to learn. I'm only a second year teacher, but this stuff has helped me tremendously and if you could benefit from this as well I hope it helps